Hey guys, T sorry. <laughs> Today I'm going to do the field test for Artist Loft water-based markers. Um, these are um, kind of tri triangular markers that are a bit like uh, Stadler Triplus markers in terms of their body design, uh, in that they're designed not to roll. And um, when I was swatching these a while back, I already went ahead and put a little paper swatch to designate the color because the marker cap is really not indicative of the ink that's inside. And this is a dry application ink test, so I'm just going to go ahead and move my watercolory things out of the way. So I have this cute little illustration of Kara, and I've already picked out some of the colors that I thought might work okay. Um, it's a set of... How many? Jeez, does it not say how many markers? Hmm. I want to say I bought the 36 set, but I mean that is just a guess. I really just don't remember. Um, and uh, like a lot of these large sets, they don't really have a lot of skin tones necessarily. So uh, I, I kind of went and looked ahead of time. And they're not necessarily great skin tones either so um, rather than trying to fill in all of the skin I mean all of the all bodies of color I'm going to try and just like designate the shadows which is kind of a, a trick I learned when I was researching the Crayola water base markers oh these are pilling already and they're like having an adverse reaction with the ink even though the ink I picked is a um, waterproof ink but this is the only coloring in the shadows is kind of a trick I learned from like checking out how other artists handled uh, water-based markers because water-based markers tend to to pill the paper if you apply in layers. And I mean, diff all different brands perform differently. Markers like this or like uh, Crayola Super Tips will tear up your paper if applied in layers. So you really kind of want to minimize how much, or I'm sorry, minimize how much paper surface they touch. Which, I mean, doesn't really, doesn't really bode well for these markers, right? And uh, I'm using Payson marker paper, and Payson is a like a subsidiary of Strathmore paper, but this is not particularly good high-end marker paper. It's pretty, I mean, I got it at Walmart. It's pretty low, low-grade stuff, which I think is great for the water, ba like the, the big store or store brand water-based marker tests because that's what most people who would have access to these markers would be using themselves. And I paid $4.99 for a whole bunch of these fine felt tipped uh, water based markers and I'd, I think I'd already done um, a watercolor swatch and they perform really poorly so I am opting just to do the dry application the regular marker application because I feel like these are not uh, an a good substitute for watercolor markers The nib is really stiff, there's no give to it. Um, you, you, you're kind of limited in how much color you can apply at any one time. This, this supposed skin tone is like really, you, it's hard to tell on camera, but it's really kind of a hot pink rather than an actual skin tone. hands are already starting to cramp up um, with a lot of uh, I think I've said this before but with cheaper markers including alcohol based markers um, it actually takes longer to use cheap markers that don't have a brush than it does to use um, more expensive markers that do I 
it's a shame because I really liked this illustration and now I'm not going to. That's always the risk with field tests. I mean, you kind of know what you're getting into before you... Sorry, I'm trying to take photos as I go, too. You kind of know what you're getting into, but it still sucks to ruin something that you, you liked. So layering uh, already causes pilling and smearing. And um, it's hard to see on camera, and I can't really zoom in, given where my camera is. So I'm taking photos of it so you guys can see it if you check out the blog post. So I guess that means there are no good skin tones in this set, which is a bummer. And you can't really layer them for color variation. I mean, really, that is like hot pink. That's not a skin tone. Which, uh, I mean, it's a shame. And the uh, markers don't have color names. And uh, I bought these at my local Michaels, which is the one in Nashville, Tennessee, off of um, 100 Oaks. I think I paid about $4.99 for the set, so it's not like I broke the bank, but these are pretty terrible markers, especially when uh, up and up markers perform a little bit better, a lot better actually, I kind of like them. Um, and Crayola markers do perform better than this, especially as like a fake watercolor. The colors are just like nothing at all like the the tip color just really disappointing if you hear my camera going off I apologize I'll turn it off I'll turn the noise off but I am taking photos as I go through um, so my readers who prefer to, to only read can follow along. I'm kind of the same way, to be honest. Um, I watch a lot of the stuff I watch on YouTube. I watch it on my PlayStation 3. And I, uh, if I'm reading a blog, I don't really necessarily want to watch videos as mixed in. But some of you guys said you did want that, so I wanted to have the option of having both. Now I'm just going to fill in the whole, or a lot of the hair, I think, trying to be kind of careful not to overlap too much right now. Um, if you do use water-based markers, and you do use, I actually recommend you do it on a um, wood pulp-based watercolor paper. It can kind of stand up to the scrubbing a little bit better than um, smooth marker papers can. Marker papers are more designed for um, alcohol-based markers than they are for uh, water-based markers. But if you... If you insist on using a smooth marker paper like I'm insisting right now, um, I recommend you actually let your layers of ink dry fully, like like five minutes between layers, um, and that way you're less likely to tear up your paper. Techniques that would work for um, alcohol-based markers, like making small circles, actually really scrub and tear up papers like this so you really want to avoid them if you can which means you will get some streaking and I mean these are really bad I'm gonna remove my clip these are really bad water-based markers anyway um, they're sold in Michael's art supply section, not their kids' supply section, um, next to, like, nicer markers. But in general, Artist Loft is kind of a, um, it's a Michael's brand, and it's kind of a crummy brand. Uh, their materials are hit and miss at best. I have written reviews for, uh, their water bait, well... At time of recording, they're written but not in my queue. At time of you guys reading this, they will 
hopefully be in my uh, available for you guys to read. I need to get on that. Just like my color selection is really just not, it's hard for me to find usable colors for this. And it's like a lot of really ugly colors. The colors that like never run out in your marker case because you don't ever use them. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm working around the hair right now so I can give it time to dry. And I drew Kara angry because I knew these markers were going to be... When I was swatching them, I was having difficulty with them already. So I knew these were going to be a bad pick. But I was curious. wanted to see how bad bad can be. I mean, I thought the up and up markers were going to be just like this. I thought they were going to be like this. And I actually really, really like them for... Because um, you can like kind of fudge them into behaving like alcohol-based markers. So they're kind of cool. Um, I really ought to do a tutorial for you guys on doing that because I I think it's like a great uh, stopgap between alcohol-based markers and water-based markers. Like, you know, some of the techniques can even be used the same. Okay, so I have to let her acorn cap, which is really streaky, and her hair which is also really streaky dry before I can try to put another layer on. Um. I'm also moving kind of quick because I don't want to get super... I, I, I plan on doing subsequent layers on some of these parts that I'm being kind of sloppy with. But I also don't want to invest a lot of energy into something that I know will look... I know will look bad. I mean, um, these are probably fine if you, or I don't know, they're okay for like a kid, I assume. I mean, they're water-based. I'm making an assumption that they're non-toxic. I could be wrong about that. I could be giving myself cancer right now and just unaware of it. I would not recommend these for adult coloring, or coloring books for adults, um, because they're so scratchy and you can't layer them. And I know that's not always a uh, prime concern, but like you can't even, you have to be careful when like even filling in white spots because it will tear up the paper. Um, the nibs are just really mediocre. I've been kind of looking for a good marker for, um, to use in those kind of coloring books because my mom enjoys doing them. She uses Crayola Super Tips right now. And she's happy with them, but I don't know. I thought it'd be like a cool way to combine my obsession with like a wide range of art supplies with a current interest of hers or current hobby of hers. She's not like super into it. She's not one of the ones who frames them or anything like that. I, th I think that's kind of cool. Like they have some really cool coloring books right now that have like really nice paper and you can like if you like what you've done you can frame them she's not into that like I offered to teach her some basic watercolor techniques because somebody one of the publishers recently released a book intended to be like watercolored on 
And I was just like, oh, that's so cool. We could do that together, maybe. But no, she doesn't want to do that. And that's fine. I mean, it's like a relaxation uh, thing for her. Something to, like, help her calm down when she is having a bad day. So I didn't want to, I don't want to, like, take that away from her just because I have to make things into things they're not. Um, I just had kind of hoped we could combine our interests. Not on this one. That's okay. And uh, I, the, the swatch stickers I put on are actually kind of annoying. Um, but I, I couldn't find any, like, matte sticker paper that I current I wasn't going to buy sticker paper for this and right now I use glossy sticker paper for my stickers for shows so uh, I didn't think that would work so well because I didn't know how this would dry on that and I didn't want it smearing everywhere so I used uh, hole protectors like uh, like binder hole protectors and uh, they I mean it works okay it's just not like as good as it could be but I mean these markers aren't as good as they could be and I really didn't want to invest a lot of energy in markers that make me want to scream a little bit they're not good so if you if you do uh, if you enjoy coloring books to like calm down these are not good markers for you maybe uh, I actually think maybe the up and up ones would be pretty good because they are just and they are forgiving and they're cheap like they're a good combination of, of accessible and affordable and uh, they perform pretty well for what they are I really need to do a video on them for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about um, there is a post about them but it doesn't show how I, I was doing what I did so I thought maybe a video might be a better way to do that. Now I'm just trying to find bright, cute colors to fill in her dress. These are very scrubby markers. Scratch the paper a lot. However, um, if you use these markers and you're able to bend them to your will, if you're able to get them to produce nice results, um, I would really love it if you commented below or um, shared a link or emailed me because I'd really like to see what you're able to do. Um, sorry, that's my coffee machine turning off on a timer. And um, I will be sure to share, with your permission, I will be sure to share your links to your work in the, uh, the regular blog, the blog itself. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little scattered head to de headed today. I'm thinking about something else while I'm talking to you guys. I'm thinking about how I need to go to Office Max so I can go get my minis printed. And I'm thinking about how that has not happened yet and how it needs to happen because I don't want to be up all night folding mini comics alright so I'm going to attempt to <laughs> I'm going to attempt to add more layers to her hair and her hat and maybe her shoes. 
And we'll find out how that goes. I might be really sad. I might really regret this. Well, you know, it doesn't do to get invested. So with these kind of markers, you, I'm like trying to treat them like I do other brands, and I, that's not going to work. So with these markers, if you really, really want to use them, if you insist, I recommend you like kind of sketch in so more cartoony than what I normally do sketch in your color fields rather than um, trying to feather them in like you would with Copics or uh, the up and up markers oh man that's like such a harsh transition that's bad that is a bad color combination right there oh sorry just And I guess fortunately for me, this marker is already a little bit beaten up, so it's actually not tearing up the paper as much. Kind of uh, beaten it into submission. So it doesn't beat up my paper. Oh, there goes my brush. Not that I was using it, but I don't want to leave it on the floor. I have a cat. He likes to eat things he shouldn't eat. He really likes my watercolor brush. Like, he likes eating my watercolor brushes and he likes drinking my watercolor water. The dirtier, the better. I use two cups and he'll go for, like, the gross one that I use to, like, rinse colors out in. He's not a smart cat. And I like to paint on the floor, so I have to chase him out of it. Maybe they should have named Cadmium Red Catmium Red. I'm turning the paper now. Oh, you can see all the other ink tests. Nah, just some of the other ink tests I've done. I try to keep my, um, I have, I, I, by doing reviews like this, I end up generating like a massive amount of stuff. And a lot of it is just stuff uh, I wouldn't want to sell because it looks like it looks like this, right? Like it's not good. I wouldn't. I'd feel bad asking someone to pay for it. Um, and I also like will revisit it for my own reference sometimes. But I have like a lot of illustrations that just you can't do anything with them, and they're not like portfolio worthy. And I mean, I guess there's something to be said about, um, it's made me, like, using these materials has actually, to an extent, made me a stronger artist. Because I've had to let go of some of the idiosyncrasies that were, like, I, I can't, you can't be as persnickety. You have to just, like, grit your teeth and keep pushing. Because, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, I was off camera for you guys for a minute on camera is actually kind of a reach for me especially because my office chair just broke so I'm like le really leaning over because it's really short and I'm really short and the table's high so it's like a bad combination but I have like I was saying I have all these pieces that just can't really be used for anything because they're generated for uh, reviews and stuff. I keep, I mean, I, I like scan a lot of the watercolor field tests and stuff. Um, I guess I'm going to include those as like maybe supplemental material for book two. This is not going to be usable. Paper texture feels horrible, and I'm scrubbing right now. I'm being, I'm being bad, because I'm, I know this is gonna wreck the paper surface, and I'm just, I don't care. It's an acorn hat, by the way. Ugh. Ugh. 
with the tips all gummy too. Let me see if I can show you guys. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Um, and usually I get a little bit sassy and I'm like, I can't give you guys an opinion on this. It takes more time than it took to record this video for me to decide. And that's mostly true with like middle performing or mid-range supplies or good supplies like sometimes I need to decide if it's worth the money but I can pretty much definitively say that these are not worth your money go buy up and up washable markers for you or your kid or go buy Crayola super tips for you or your kid but skip the artist loft markers because the color selection is bad the colors don't match the caps the nibs tear up your paper um, they're really stingy with the ink. They're just not, they're kind of a pain to use. So, um, I hope that helps you guys. Um, if there are any supplies that you'd like to see me review that you think I haven't reviewed yet, and please, please check. I do get people who are like, hey, have you tried blah blah? And it's like, yup, that's been in the queue for two weeks. Um, but, uh, like just send me an email or something and suggest stuff. I'm, I am interested in testing the stuff you guys are interested in seeing and I've just been kind of guessing uh, every now and then people will write in and I'll try to answer their questions but for the most part I'm just kind of guessing as to what people see because a lot of you guys are shy and um, I appreciate that I'm shy too I don't bite sometimes it takes me a while to reply to your emails because I'm really shy and I have anxiety problems so I feel that and if there's a method if being anonymous makes you more comfortable, send it to me on Tumblr. I have anonymous asks open. Um, if, if doing it with the intention of it just being like a quick little thing is easier for you, send it to me on Twitter. Sometimes it's easier for me to tweet at somebody than it is for me to like think up an email because I am trying to be polite and I'm trying to be respectful without, but also show that I'm familiar with the topic and that always causes issues for me. But sometimes Twitter is a lot easier. Um, or you can send me, leave me a comment below. Uh, that might be the easiest of all. And I read them and I don't always respond and I probably should, but it's the anxiety, like I said. Um, but I do read them and I'll try to do a video based on, or a blog post based on what you guys want me to review or topics you want me to cover. You know, just let me know. I'm <laughs> just kind of playing it by ear here. Anyway, have a good evening guys, bye.